Josh Pate is with us, CBS Sports at Lake Kick. Josh, he announced his tour uh, and his first date last night. Welcome in, Josh Pate. How are you? How would how, well? I'm good. How do we feel about the first well, date? I mean, I, it's going to be fairly toxic and disgusting feeling down there in Gainesville. It is. I wondered what broke the tie. I would assume because it's a Saturday tour. It was down to Notre Dame at Texas A&M and Miami at Florida. That's my assumption. What broke that tie for you? Well, um, I can't guarantee that it will be viable to see Florida later in the year, whereas either A&M and or Notre Dame will statistically, they're more likely to be around in October, November. So like that's that's why I would never pick Georgia early in the year. I know I could see Georgia 15 times, Bama 15 times, but Florida, I don't know how the season's going to go. So I definitely want to get down there while it makes sense to get down there. Yeah, I said this earlier that – like, it's almost an awkward feeling for whoever loses that game, the head coach. You know, like Billy Napier, it's almost like he's dead man walking right now. Mario Cristobal, probably because of the contract and the buyout, he's going to be fine. But if you're a Miami fan and you lose that game and you still got the ACC coming up, you're like, what the heck's going on here? Yeah, and people keep saying, who's it, who's it a more must-win situation for? And they keep saying, like, it's 50-50. I feel like Napier needs that one way more than Mario needs that one. Because like you just said, and I think we talked about this last time I was on the show, you could easily sell me on a world where Miami goes up there, uh, the offense is clunky to start the year, it's just a really rock fight kind of game, and Florida wins 16-14, to 14, and Miami loses one more game the rest of the year, and they're playing in Charlotte at the end of the year. Florida loses the first game, knowing what they got coming up. I Anything can happen. I have no idea how I would see them being viable down the stretch. I'm interested about this week's games, and there's not a lot, um, but SMU in Nevada, prime time on CBS Sports Network, where you do a little work. Um, this SMU team, they're going to blow Nevada out. Do you think they make some noise? <laughs> you think they make some noise in the ACC? Spoiler alert from Dunaway. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, like I, like I, the I, game's I, already been not, played. Not trying, to, <laughs> not trying to push viewers um, to the CBS Sports Network here, but they've got a lot of great features that they'll show you in the third and fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great scoreboard yeah, graphics. Yeah. Um, I think um, it's, it's possible. It depends on whether – it depends on whether one of those big three in the ACC sort of scale, sort of become an elite team, FSU, Clemson, Miami. Um, if they don't, then the entire thing could be muddy. And SMU, they got a lot of experience at quarterback. They're different, I think, than most of the time when we see a G5 elevate to P4. If you just look at the sheer roster talent, don't zoom in, zoom it out. Uh, they're, a, they're a lot more talented team, top to bottom. Roster depth's a lot better than it would be with the normal G5 jumping up. Now, having said that, they more than anyone need injury luck because even having said they're deep, they more than anyone can ill afford the um, early season depth issues. So uh, as, as, as Dunaway said there, go beat Nevada by 70. Make sure you get the starters out early second half. And I'll tell you one that no one's talking about, which is hypocritical because I haven't really spoken about it much either. FSU goes to SMU. Fairly early in the season, I think it may be their conference opener. And that's the one, if you want to pick some upset totally off the radar that would shock the world, that's one that's not inconceivable that would shock the world. SMU beating Florida State? Yeah, it's in Dallas. It's it's early enough in the year where you haven't quite figured out everything. That's the one, not that I'm predicting it. But that's the one that would shock me. I, I did predict it, Pate. I did 10 games that will keep t teams out of the college football playoff last week. And one of those was SMU giving Florida State that loss. And I think ultimately that will cost Florida State from getting to the college football playoff. So you're one of the members of that media cabal that's out to get Florida State? Is <laughs> oh, that I'm what sure. I hear? Yes. Is this holdover from last year? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. he, he, uh... It's a shame. It's a shame. They are um... – they are they are very very expert yep. at at projecting the victim mentality. Over well, the it's just months. because I've noticed it, that it's because we dislike Florida State. It has nothing to do oh, with how sure. good or bad they are. You you haven't seen uh, LT's Illuminati uh, tattoo there. He and uh, 
he and uh, Feinbaum both have them in the same place on right right. Well, back it's here. lower back though, yeah, isn't lower it? Back, yeah. Lower back. Feinbaum did the lower back. I didn't do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did the inner thigh. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, upper inner thigh. <laughs> SMU's got a weird schedule in that they never have more than a three game stretch because they got three bye weeks since they play in that blowout game in week zero. The Dunaway says don't even turn on. Uh, they they never play more than three games at a time. That's a I don't know what that means, but it is kind of interesting. I mean, I think it means they should be a pretty fresh team all year. Yeah, so they got that going for them. Now, unprofessionally, I'm just going to swerve horribly here, but I had our staff, <clears throat> meaning my producer basically, I had him print off that entire grid that shows by weeks before and how many games you've played before. And I, I don't know if I'm the first to realize this. Certainly I can't be, but I hadn't seen it mentioned anywhere. Do you realize that Ole Miss LSU game? is one of the most warped advantages in terms of bye weeks of the year. Not only does LSU get Ole Miss at home, LSU's off a bye. That's Ole Miss's seventh consecutive game. And that's one of those two big games in the year, the one at LSU, Georgia, and Oxford. That's one of the ones that people are circling and saying, boy, if they can just split these two games, maybe they make the playoff. Well, they will be beat to death against the rest of LSU team at home. So they got it to do. Yeah, now I will point out, Ole Miss plays Furman, MTSU, at Wake, Georgia, Southern, Kentucky, at South Carolina. Not exactly a murderer's row, but you make a good point yeah. because LSU does get that early buy. Wait, I, I catch rocks for uh, trashing a week zero CBS sports. You just now ruined the whole SEC network schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hell, Tom Hart and Cole Cuba don't even have to pack a bag now. <laughs> they just moved to Oxford for that early schedule. Jeez. Hey, so we were talking, you know, back to week one, and it came down to Gainesville or College Station for you. That game at College Station, a- am I totally off on saying the winner of that game is going to get into the college football playoff? Even Texas A&M with what they've got coming up, when you start to look at their schedule, I think they could be favored if they win that game in 10 consecutive games before the matchup rivalry week against Texas. I think Notre Dame losing that tackle is a massive deal for that game. Massive deal. It was already going to be tough for them. Um, The line moved in conjunction with that feeling. I do not think you are wrong. I would would go as far as to say I think the winner of the game will be in the college football playoff. Now, if you say that about Notre Dame, people say, oh, okay, I could see that. People aren't ready to wrap their minds around Texas A&M as a playoff team. We broached this on the show last night. Um, I don't want people to just forget when Elko came to Duke, no one cared. And he goes to Duke and they immediately just boom. They're way better than they had been. He was there for two years and they massively upgraded uh, those two years. And I remember I went back and watched the show we did the day after they beat Clemson to start the season last year. And we did a segment that I'd forgotten about, which is pathetic. But I remember saying there are some situations where a guy inherits a job and it's not a total rebuild. Some of the pieces are there. They just have been horrifically mismanaged and misstructured and misused. So you could immediately upgrade. The right guy walking in can immediately upgrade. Well, Elko did that at Duke. Elko can absolutely do that at Texas a and This is not a start from scratch situation. In fact, it's one of the better entry points that you could ever have. It's not quite Kalen DeBoer at Bama, but it's not too far below that in terms of rungs on the ladder. So, They'll be nasty defensively this year. Offensive line's questionable, not necessarily a weakness, questionable. Quarterback, if he's there the whole year, uh, can play at a very high level. And just the structure and organization there, especially if they win in week one, that'll be one of the bigger hype bubbles that starts to build. So I just want to join you in getting ahead of it. Yeah, if they win it, I think they'll go to the playoffs. Well, yeah, I mean, four of their six losses, one possession last year. And as Mm -hmm. you said, mismanaged. And now you got a coach. A good coach. I think you got a good one. I think also it's going to be fun to look back on this whole cycle three or four years from now. Because I just have I have so little doubt about the fact that Mike Elko is the right guy for the job. And not a big deal was made about him. Now, you guys are in the weeds of this stuff every day. I'm in the weeds of this stuff every day. So we've talked about it. But you know, I mean, do you realize what percentage of the college football public comes back to the table in August do you realize how many of them had to be told who Texas A&M hired? Yeah. It wasn't just understood universally who they even went and got. Total afterthought, and I think they nailed the hire. Um, obviously, you made your commitment on which uh, gas partner, travel, convenience store partner you are. It came down to four. 
Yeah, you went with the quick trip. Uh, did Pilot run out of NIL money for you or what? They put their name on Neyland Stadium. They uh, they flipped an Alabama recruit. They got a five-star offensive lineman commitment last week. Uh, it just became a it became an NIL deal. You chased the money? Is that what happened? Yeah, by the way, Keith Urban didn't do a pop-up at QT. That's, <laughs> That's right. true. That's, That's right. Point. He was at yeah. Bucky's. It I mean, happens. I don't want to interrupt. I want to let all these thoughts get out there because what's, what I'm about to say is important. Now, now, what Lance just said is accurate. But let me also point out, no one had ever done a pop-up concert at any Bucky's until I committed to Quick Trip. Oh. So let's not act like one didn't lead okay. to the other. Okay. And I don't want to start okay. a war with Keith Urban, okay? That's definitely I like not where what your I'm head is. to do to yeah. use this show as, as a mechanism for. But also, look – done away i went where i felt prioritized okay and if if pilot committed to someone else i am the quarterback that just had other offers i am pat white to their alabama and auburn west virginia wanted me so i'm gonna go shine at west virginia aka quick trip but i will say in pilot's defense it looks like it was money well spent so far i will say that (laughs) the uh the qt they excel in the fountain drink which is my big thing Mm -hmm. they've got the good plastic cup which i like a clear plastic cup for fountain drinks right because you can get it in your cup holder that's right doesn't start bending around and and their diet coke i'm telling you man it hits different than most of those uh convenience stores qt's got a good diet coke mix so you like his choice almost mcdonald's-esque yeah i think i think paint one of the right call here with qt i would i would leak something can i leak something and just get out ahead of company pr I have it on good authority that in the not too distant future, a full cold brew tap situation will appear at most quick trips across the great United States of America. And so you pick your cold brew, you pull the lever and boom in your plastic cup or, or whatever receptacle you have there. I'm excited about that. Mm. I'm not a big cold brew guy, but that sounds intriguing for the cold brew fun- mm-hmm. fans out there. I will just stick with my Dr. Pepper that, or my Diet Coke, excuse me, that's got the right mix there at QT. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It just hits different from QT. All right, Josh Pate. Uh, all new. What? You got another well, one? One more. Just because before you came on, Dunaway has USC making the 12 team playoff. Uh-huh. I would oh, love wow. to. Oh, wow. This year? Yeah. In 2024? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I would oh. love to see it, but I told him he's insane. Look, I don't want to doubt Lincoln Riley because I still think Lincoln Riley is one of the best offensive minds in all of college football and I think Miller Moss is going to be solid any quarterback play he's got is going to be good but that schedule is is it's deceptive I mean it it's a tricky schedule in year one of the Big Ten and that would be one of the biggest surprises even with that brand in college football this year if they were to go 10 and 2. Yeah so here's the problem we'll know pretty early on um the problem is if they don't have their defensive line situation rectified, it's not just the game at Michigan or against LSU. Um, It's not just those. Penn State becomes a massive problem for them. Wisconsin becomes a massive problem for them. And so you, you, you go from thinking USC, if they've got it rectified enough, can, can win some shootouts, can make some people uncomfortable to thinking they will have done to them what Michigan did to Penn State last year. We don't even have to throw the ball. We'll just run it 30 times in a row at you. We'll completely demoralize you. We we did our biggest games of the year last year or last night, and I picked Penn State at USC as one of those games, which I don't think many people are looking forward to. But that's the kind of game, like, that's the first time a Big Ten opponent of any, you know, laud goes out to the Coliseum. If that happens to them in front of their home fans out there, however many of them there are there that night, if that happens to them out there – and also, you guys know as well as I do, Penn State fans may outnumber USC fans in the Coliseum on that night. That would be the wake-up call, just kind of getting pantsed physically at home and being outnumbered in the stands. That has not happened to those people. Has not happened. So, I, for, selfishly, I hope you're right, Dunaway. I hope you're right. But that LSU game in week one, could you could you not see either team winning that thing by double digits and not being surprised? That's totally unpredictable to me. Oh, if USC won that game by double digits, it would shock me. Yeah, it, underneath my Taylor Swift tattoo, pumping a little Lincoln Riley blue collar coach this year into my veins. Blue collar, blue collar coach. He's getting rid of all the stars. He's going to play a little bit better defense this year. Maybe yeah. the best defense of his year. It, all the NIL trash they had last year. Better <laughs> yeah. people this year. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> Listen, 
I don't say this with any joke. We are more blue collar than he is. And you know how, <laughs> do you know how low blue collar we are? One of my neighbors had a car break down uh-huh. uh, Friday afternoon. And it was hot, hotter than 10 hells. And he was just outside behind my house. And I walked out there and I was like, hey, what happened? Because I don't know. It just stopped. And he popped his hood. He goes, what do you think? And I said, <laughs> brother, uh, alternator. It's the only thing I know to say. Uh, alternator. Tell, tell Pete your, 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 the story that made you ball is forever, where your daughter had the flat tire. You show no. up to change it, and her boyfriend's got a coat oh, because Dunaway no. can't. Yeah. Hold on. Dunaway yeah. couldn't, couldn't change the tire, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Tell me yeah. the story. <laughs> she parked it. She was on her way to work, and she parked it. Um, she says, hey, Dad, I, I, I went on and walked. I was only a few blocks away from work. It was a Saturday morning. I parked it in the CVS parking lot in Homewood. I get there. It is parked right by the door. So I'm there trying to change a tire. They don't have really good stuff in the back of the Honda CRVs. The jack, I couldn't figure it out. It wasn't a manly like jack. It was a spin wheel. It felt like it was made of, a, of tin foil. And uh, people are like, hey, love the show. As they're walking by, I'm sweating. It's the summertime. Two and a half hours I worked on trying to get the, the last lug nut off. Uh, after rearranging the jack two or three times, two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I uh, called my wife, or she called me. She said, how's it going? And I said, can't get one lug nut off. I have tried and tried and tried. Uh, she goes, you know, we've got free towing, right? <laughs> our insurance. <laughs> I said, hell no, I don't. I wish you'd have told me that two and a half hours ago. We just towed that thing uh, to a local sponsor. Yeah, didn't go yeah, well. Yeah, they're gone. They're <laughs> gone. <laughs> hey, we're correct. One lug nut. No. Uh, and whole, apparently I stripped it so much trying to get it off that they had to replace the whole everything in that whole tire facing there. <laughs> More stripped that day. Yeah. The lug nut or Dunaway's pride. Yeah. Uh, that, that had long since yeah. departed. I, <laughs> yeah, I was never going to be on anybody's pit crew. I'll go ahead and tell you. All right. The whole new Saturday tour launches August 31st in Gainesville for the Hurricanes, the Gators. Josh paid all over the country with CBS Sports. At Lake Kick Josh uh, on social media and also on YouTube. Go like and subscribe to his show just like you do Iris. Thank you very much, Pate. It's always great to talk with you. Farewell, sirs. All right, buddy. Take care, Josh. Pate with us on the Johnston RVcenter.com hotline.